To the administration of the school, headed by our hardworking management administrator, Mrs. Joyce and R. Malino, our school principal, Mrs. Alicia M. Donau, our assistant school principal, Mrs. Maria Teresa A. Torrechante, our school registrar, Mrs. Ana Maria Cristino R. Domingo, our human resource officer, Mrs. Mary Grace Villaluna, our OIC technical facilities and multimedia, Mrs. Crystal E. Floor, our OIC technical facilities to Mr. J. Marco Jamat, school coordinators, assistant school coordinators, team leaders, teachers, office staff, and Franciscan students, a pleasant and marvelous day to Sorry. Okay. To formally, to the administration of the school, headed by our hardworking management administrator, Mrs. Joyce and R. Malinao, our school principal, Mrs. Alicia M. Danao, our assistant school principal, Mrs. Maria Teresa A. Torrechante, our school registrar, Mrs. Ana Maria Cristina R. Domingo, our human resource officer, Mrs. Mary Grace Villaluna, our OIC technical facilities and multimedia. Mrs. Crystal E. Floor, our OIC Technical Facilities 2, Mr. J. Marco Yamat, School Coordinators, Assistant School Coordinators, Team Leaders, Teachers, Office Staff, and Franciscan Students, a pleasant and marvelous day to each and everyone. To formally start our program, may I request everyone to please stand for an invocation to be followed by the National Anthem and Franciscan Hymn. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Kababayan ang pambansang awi ng Pilipinas. Ayang pagibig na masasiyahanan, alam ng puso sa hindi ko ipumay. Upang binigang ang magiging sa manlupit, hindi ka pasisigil sa nagatang tutok sa simoy.
welcome back to school, everyone. As the year begins, I wish Franciscan students, parents, teachers, and staff a wonderful school year. I hope that your summer vacation has given you all the opportunity to rest, relax, recharge, and spend time with family and friends with social distance and COVID safe protocols. As we settle into our schools and learning spaces, I'm excited for the coming school year the engaging and innovative education opportunities ahead. Before anything else, let us read the orientation reminders. The webinar session will be recorded for school purposes only. Your microphone is automatically muted upon entry to avoid disruptions. And we encourage you to open your camera during the orientation. And if you feel that you need to ask a question, you may interact with the speaker using the chat feature of the Zoom. Now let's hear a welcoming message from the one and only Schools Management Administrator, Mrs. Joyce Ann R. Marino. A pleasant day to everyone. It's time to begin again, and we are glad you're here with us for school year 2021-2022. Online distance learning may be difficult, but we are up for the challenge. May this new academic year bring about new discoveries and exciting experiences which will shape and form us to the fullest. We also hope that this year resilient education can encourage us every day to keep striving and trying no matter what circumstances life may bring. I'm also inviting you tomorrow, August 20, at 8 o'clock in the morning, we will have a Thanksgiving Mass to be shared via Facebook Live. Again, welcome back, my dear Franciscans. Thank you so much, ma'am. Indeed, let's embrace and face the new school year ahead. For today's agenda, we will be having seven speakers to tackle the important information, a guide for this challenging virtual academic year. To start off, let's give the stage to Ms. Darlene Princess F. Limus, the school coordinator of Las Vinas branch. She will be discussing about the attendance, virtual classroom rules, the list of materials, while Mrs. Selna B. Elpa, the school coordinator of Woodside Branch, will discuss about the uniform and grooming. To the administration of the school headed by our management administrator, Mrs. Joyce and Armalino, to our school principal, Ms. Alicia M. Danau, to our assistant principal, Mrs. Maria Teresa A. Torresante, to our school registrar, Mrs. Anna Maria Cristina R. Domingo, school coordinators, assistant school coordinators, team leaders, office staff, students, and parents, a pleasant afternoon to all. Today, I'm going to discuss to you the attendance, list of materials, and birth virtual classroom rules. Okay, what is the definition of attendance? Attendance is the act of being present at a place. Number two, a record of how often a person goes to a class, talks to class, meetings, etc. Three, the number of people present at an event or meeting. Okay, since our school is conducting an online class, the pupils and students are expected to join in their class by a Zoom at least five minutes before the start of their class. Next one. However, in case that the learners encounter difficulties to connect because of weak or slow Wi-Fi connection, rest assured that the teacher assigned will make his or her Zoom class open until such time that the learners can join the class. Next, next, mom. Regarding absences, in such situation that the learners are not feeling well and cannot join the class on, join the online class, the parents should inform the class advisor regarding the rest, the reason of his her class child absence. A message through text or messenger will do. However, we will make to inform you that the attendance is a part of the performance task of pupils and students. Next, mom. Okay, virtual classroom rules. What are the virtual classroom rules? Number one, 
be on time. Please log in five minutes before your scheduled time. Number two, mute your microphone. Unmute only if being asked to do so. Number three, camera on. Kind of check your background. Four, click and raise hands button or use the chat box if you have questions. Five, avoid distractions. Six, wear proper clothes. Seven, prepare all needed materials. And number eight, practice academic honesty at all times. So those are the virtual classrooms. Next, mom. So what are the materials needed for school year 2021-2022? For junior high school, so notebook, ball pen, scientific calculator, and flash drive for backup. How about in senior high school? So senior high school, notebook. Ay, kailangan notebooks, ball pens, scientific Okay, notebooks, ball pens, scientific calculator, and flash drive for backup. That's all. Thank you. So ipapasa ko na po kay Ma'am Elpa. A wonderful afternoon to each and everyone. Uh, my topic is school uniform. The school requires our pupils and students to wear their school uniform during online class. The reason behind it is because we are trying to keep our learner focused and create a sense of unity in the task of learning. Learning. Next quote. Schedule of uniform. Monday to Thursday, school uniform. Uh, yung nakikita po ba ninyo yun? Uh, Friday, PE uniform for junior high school and senior high school. Next po. Uh, yung sa senior high school, yung uniform ninyo yung sa taas. Yung sa baba naman, yung sa uh, junior high school. Sige po, ma'am. Mm -mm. Sige po, ma'am. O, pili uniform yun every Friday. Next po, ma'am, grooming policy. Haircut strains or usual hairstyle violate the a school grooming policy, blend the hair or with hair color. Lalo na yung mga senior high school and junior high school, uh, never kayong mag uh, blend the hair. Nakikita po ba ninyo yun na sa screen, yung kulay, uh, violet, orange, gray, uh, di pwede yun sa ating paaralan, sa rules and regulation ng school. Next po. Sa hair naman ng boy, yung muho, punk style, and skin head. Di pwede po yun. Nakikita ninyo class? Hair cut boy. After coving down the hair in all direction, it should not touch the back collar of the foolish hair. Upper portion of the ear Bang should not exceed the eyebrows. Students must be clean and shaven at all times. Lalo na sa mga lalaki, ano? Uh, kailangan presentable tayo, lalo na ang senior high school. Next. Sunod. A uh, nail uh, should have no pali. Sa mga babae, hindi naman kailangan iyon. As a uh, online, ano? Uh, online virtual uh, class. Thank you. Mabuhay. Thank you so much, Ma'am Limus and Ma'am Elpa. Next up, the discussion of Zoom application and voucher by Mrs. Jenny V. Hiramos. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm Miss Jen. 
So, um, edidis- naririnig po ako ng maayos? Jen. Okay, pa-cleared po. So, ang um, isi-share ko po sa inyo is all about Zoom. So, alam ko na ang bawat isa sa atin, aware na kung ano yung Zoom. So, parang may sakit na tayo dyan na acne. Ano ba yung acne? O, di ba, tinapos ka na kagad. Yung alam ko na yan, eh. Ayan, kaya ayaw na makinig kasi may acne na. Pero, uh, ma-importante na paulit o inuulit-ulit natin to para kahit papano, hindi natin makalimutan. Okay, so, ano nga yung Zoom? So, ito yung ginagamit po, di ba, nating platform para po sa ating class. So, didiretso na tayo kung paano tayo mag-join. So, mas uh, much better po kung naka-install na sa mga gamit po nating laptop or computer yung Zoom po na application para hindi na tayo mahirapan. So, mas uh, nire-recommend po namin na yun po ang gagamitin, laptop and uh, computer instead of cellphone kasi nga pwede nating, pwedeng hindi tayo ang makinig ng maayos kung cellphone ang gamit natin, okay? So, yun nga, kailangan po laptop and computer. So, kung meron naman kayong iPad, basta inform nyo po yung mga advisor kung ano yung gamit ng device. Okay po, so kung meron lang naka-install na Zoom uh, app sa atin sa mga gamit po nating devices, so mag-join lang po tayong dyan. And uh, regarding po sa Zoom meeting ID and passcode, ay ibibigay po yan ng mga advisor po natin. So, starting today or maaring nag-start na sila uh, yesterday sa pag-send ng mga meeting ID and passcode na gagamitin natin sa Monday sa opening ng class. Okay, so mag-join lang po tayo. So, same uh, meeting ID and passcode po for every subject. So, kung naaalala ng iba, lalo na yung mga uh, dati na po nating students, ang, ginaga- ang nangyayari dati, every subject, iba-ibang meeting ID and passcode, tama? So, pero nung bandang ending third quarter to fourth quarter, ang nangyari, iisang meeting ID, iisang passcode na lang po ang ginagamit natin for every subject po. Okay po, so uh, kung meron tayong mga Gmail or meron na tayong naka-install na Zoom sa mga gamit nating laptop and computer, i-check natin kung naga na yan kasi baka hindi na natin na-activate or baka yung email address natin nakalimutan na natin sa ilang buwan na bakasyon. So, bago magpasukan, bago mag-Monday, i-ready na natin yan and i-check na natin para pagdating ng Monday, wala na tayong magiging problema. So, ano ba yung mga best practices which is nabanggit na ni Ma'am Bimus kanina yung virtual classroom rules? So, ilan lamang po ito sa mga... Uh, Uh, mga dapat po bang i-practice natin during Zoom po natin. So, syempre, yun po, mag, mag, pag mag start na po yung class natin, so, i-ready na po natin si Zoom. Magat maaari, nasa desktop po siya para madali nating makita. Then, pangalawa, i-check po natin yung internet uh, internet speed natin. So, kung halimbawa, free Wi-Fi lang po ang gamit natin kasi wala pa tayong Wi-Fi, so, minsan, pinapa-off yung camera para medyo mas mabilis ang improve or ng, yung mag-improve yung quality ng uh, Zoom natin. Pero, uh, di ba, ina-advise po namin na sana naka-on cam tayo. So, inform lang po natin lagi sa advisor kung meron tayong problema regarding sa internet speed. Hindi para kontakin nila ang mga uh, internet provider para mapabilis ang, ano nyo, ang connection nyo. But, para at least aware sila kung bakit uh, minsan malag kayo kaya bakit minsan hindi kayo makaka-attend ng class. Okay? Pero sana... Huwag nating gawing dahilan ang internet connection kung hindi naman talaga dapat idahilan. Okay? So, baka tinatamad lang pero idadahilan si internet connection. Okay? So, may acne rin ang mga teacher. Alam alam ko na yan eh, yung style ng mga yan, no? ng mga estudyante. So, syempre, iti-turn po natin yung camera natin na on. Then, yung, uh, yung camera po natin ay level. Huwag sa likod. Wag sa kung saan sa ang parte ng bahay nyo. Kasi for sure, sa so one year na uh, naging, nagkaklase yung advisor o yung teacher nyo, sa ulo na nila yung parte ng bahay nyo kasi yun yung lagi nyo pinapakita. Okay? So, yung mukha niya dapat nang masa ulo nila. Okay? So, kapag kailangan lang nating mag-mute, okay? Kung kailangan lang natin mag-unmute, dun lang natin uh, galawin yung audio po natin. Kasi baka yung... 
uh, yung ingay na sa bahay nyo naririnig na mas aso na yung naririnig ni teacher, hindi na yung sagot nyo. Okay, so papwesto rin tayo, hanap tayo ng pwesto na maliwanag para na sa ganoon, makita ng mga advisor natin yung kagapuhan nyo, kagandahan nyo, kagaya ng mga teacher na nagsasalita ngayon. Okay, so be mindful of what's going on behind you. Okay, so maging ano rin pa, po tayo, maging aware. Baka kasi meron kaming na-experience na yung bata, nagkaklase, yung, yung magulang niya nasa likod, naka, ano, ang ganda ng pagkakahiga. Okay, so maging aware po tayo kung sino nasa likod natin. Hindi sa sinasabi natin na palayasin nyo kung sino mang nasa likod nyo. But maging aware, kumbaga, since tayo ay nasa pangalawang year na po natin ng online class, so wala tayong face-to-face, i-set up na natin yung lugar natin na parang pang-classroom na talaga, na pang-school na talaga, kung paano siniset up ng mga teacher yung sarili nila as school setup naman. So, dapat ganun din po yung mga students po natin. And syempre po, pinakalas, be yourself and have fun. Okay, so, sa dami ng negativity na nangyayari sa mundo, alam naman po natin yan, aware tayo dyan sa Facebook, sa news, sa TV, kung ano-anong mga negative sa nangyayari. Huwag na tayong magpadagdag. Okay, ano po ibig sabihin? Maging, uh, enjoyin lang po natin yung uh, klase natin, enjoyin po natin yung uh, ginagawa natin kahit na tayo ay nasa ganitong setup lang. So, hopefully, uh, pag-pray po natin na dumating yung time na magkaka-face-to-face class na po tayo. Okay, pero sa ngayon, dito po muna tayo magkaklase sa likod ng mga camera. Okay po. So, next ko pong itatopic is all about uh, grade 11 and grade 12. Yung regarding po sa voucher program. So, yung iba po dito, karamihan po sa atin ay mga grade uh, 11. Okay, yung iba naman po ay grade 10 and yung iba naman yung grade 12. So, makinig po tayo ng mabuti, lalong-lalo na po yung grade 11 po natin ngayon. Okay, so sa RA 10533, binanggit po doon yung Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, which is ma-expand na po yung 10 years ng, junior, ng pag-aaral po natin to 12 years. So, nag-start po yan ng school year 2016-2017, na yun nga po nadagdag na sa grade 11 in grade 12. Okay po, so dati hanggang grade 10 or 4th year high school lang, ngayon, nadagdag na si 11 and 12. Okay, regarding po sa voucher program, ito po ay para sa mga grade 10 completers of junior high school. So yung mga grade 11 po natin na naka-enroll na ngayon, kayo po ay uh, pwedeng-pwedeng mag-apply for voucher. So ito po yung financial assistance na binibigay po ng DepEd po sa mga uh, grade 10 completers po or sa mga grade 12 po natin. Then, ang validity and redemption po nito, so mariridip po ito ngayong school year 2021-2022. So, in the first semester. So, kung may tanong na ma'am, uh, open na po bang application? So, uh, hindi pa rin po open ang voucher. Okay. Okay, then, Ang amount granted po for voucher uh, uh, beneficiaries from private school po is 14,000 po for first for, for, for grade 11 and another 14,000 for grade 12. Pang, kung kayo naman po ay galing na public school, so yung mga grade 11 po natin dyan na galing public school, ang marireceive nyo po is 17,500. And for info po, Mapalad ang mga taga-public school na grade 10 completers kasi no need na po silang mag-apply for voucher. So, automatic, meron na po kayong 17,500 na marireceive. While ang mga private, mapalad pa rin naman kayo kasi meron tayong marireceive ng 14,000. Pero, kailangan pa rin po natin itong applyan. Okay po? So, ano bang mga condition? So, ang mga grade 11 po natin, makakareceive pa rin po sila ng voucher for grade 12 if magtutuloy po sila sa pag-aaral ng senior high. So, ibig sabihin, ma'am, pumasok ako ngayong grade 11 na tapos ko hanggang second sim, eh, pinamad ako, ayoko na mag-aaral muna next year. Sa so, next, next year na lang, mawawala po yung validity ng voucher. So, nang ibig ko pong sabihin, tatapusin po natin kung ano yung sinimula natin. Okay? Kung pumasok po tayo ng grade 11 as STEM student, papasok pa rin po tayo ng grade uh, 11 STEM student for second SEM ng grade 11. So, next year, ganun ulit pagdating ng grade 12. So, tuloy-tuloy lang. Okay? So, wala naman tayong grade 13 hanggang grade 12 lang. 
Kaya ituloy na natin yan. So, nakakapagod pero alam kong kakayanin niyo Okay po? So, next. So, yun nga. Uh, kagaya ng binanggit ko, pwedeng mawala ang subsidy ng voucher kapag nag-drop out of the middle of school. So, hindi ko na ito babasahin lahat. Ang pinaka uh, point po dito, huwag hihinto sa pag-aaral. Okay? For uh, alam nyo po, napaka-approachable naman, napaka-ambait ng mga teacher po natin sa senior high school. Uh, for sure po, tutulungan po nila kayo sa abot ng inyong makakaya para mapasa po natin yung school year na to. And syempre, hanggang makatapos po kayo ng grade 12. Okay? So, next po, ano po ba yung mga requirements, Ma'am Jen, for voucher? So, ito po ay nababanggit na namin na kapag sa atin po na grade 11, wala po kayong dapat problemahin pa dahil kami na po yung bahalang mag-assist sa inyo sa pag apply Pero... Pakiusap po kung may mga naikinig ng mga uh, magulang po sa atin, huwag po kayong magagalit sa amin kung hindi po kayo maaprobahan niya. Wala po kaming kasalanan. Kami po ay tumutulong lang. So, if ever po na meron pong naaprobahan, okay, so ang DepEd po ang nag approve po nun. Ang nagdi-disapprove eh sila din po. Okay, so paki-screenshot na lang po mga grade 11 students itong mga requirements na hang, uh, hindi pa rin naman po open yung system for online application. Pero if ever, i-ready na po natin to para once na mag-open, makapag-apply po tayo agad. Okay, screenshot po yan. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? Tapos na. So, yan. Ano po ba yung mga yan, Ma'am Jen? So, ito po yung itsura sa bandang left. Ayan po yung tinatawag nating voucher application form. Ano po bang mga inihingi na information dyan? About lang naman po sa inyo. About sa family nyo, kung ilang kayo magkakapatid, ilang taong kayo, anong birthday. So, yun lang po. So, kung ihingiin po namin to sa inyo, uh, kalimbawa po, nag-open na yung system, tapos tinext po namin kayo, tinawagan po namin kayo regarding dito, huwag po kayong mag-alala dahil aware po tayo sa data privacy, uh, privacy, kami lang po ang nakakaalam din ng mga information po na yan. Nakakailanganin po natin para sa pag apply na voucher. Ano naman po, Ma'am Jen, yung privacy notice? So, yan po yung consent para alam po natin or meron uh, aware din po kayo na kayo na hinihingian po namin ng mga info, in, uh, information about po sa mga uh, info about sa student applicant po. So, kung may kita natin, uh, kailangan lang po namin malaman ng inyong mga name, date of birth. So, yun lang. Yun lang naman po ang kailangan. Next po, ito po yung itsura ng Certificate of Financial Assistance. If ever po na Nung time na grade 10 kayo, is nakareceive kayo ng financial assistance nung itong school year 2020-2021, last year, ilalagay po natin dyan. And isi-certify po yan ng ating school principal ni si Ma'am Danao. Okay po, kakailanganin po natin yung pirma niya. Kaya magpakabait po kayo, okay? Ito naman po ang proof of financial. So, ibig sabihin, ay kung sino po yung nagpapaaral po sa atin or nag-help po sa na isend po tayo sa na pag-aralin po tayo. So, ito po yung mga requirements. Paka-screenshot nyo na lang din po. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ayan. So, uh, usually pang hinihingi lang naman po namin is certificate of employment po, katibayan na sila ay nagtatrabaho with compensation din po. Ayun lamang po, maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. Thank you so much, Ma'am Jen. Now for our next speaker, let's welcome our schools registrar, Mrs. Ana Maria Cristino R. Domingo to give us a thorough discussion about classroom assessment. A pleasant afternoon to each and everyone. I would like to welcome the new students. Welcome to the Franciscan family. And for the old students, welcome to the new academic year 2021 and 2022. Okay, I was assigned this afternoon to discuss to you the classroom assessment. Okay, let's start. <laughs> First things first, let us define classroom assessment. Well, what do we mean by classroom assessment? It is a joint process that involves both teachers and learners. It is an integral part of teaching and learning. So meaning to say, the classroom assessment is very essential in teaching and learning. Okay? So, sa simpleng salita, classroom assessment, ito yung paraan namin mga teachers to gauge 
to measure what you have you learned from the class discussion, from the lesson. At hindi lang po yun, syempre, after the discussion, meron tayong mga konting quizzes, meron tayong mga konting sasagutan, yung mga sit work, at yung mga yon ay i-evaluate ni teacher. So, yun ang magiging assessment namin sa mga natutunan po ninyo. Okay, another definition, it is a process that is used to keep track of learners' progress in relation to learning standard and in the development of 21st century skills to promote self-reflection and personal accountability among students about their own learning and to provide basis for the profiling of student performance on the learning competencies and standards of the curriculum. Various kinds of assessment shall be used appropriately for different learners who come from diverse contexts such as cultural background and life experiences. So meaning to say, the teacher keep track of learners' progress. Kung nagde-develop ba kayo, uh, nagpo-progress ba yung learning ninyo, nakaka, uh, natututunan nyo ba yung mga bagong skills, meron ba kayong natututunan ng mga bagong skills. And aside from it, syempre, hindi lang kami basta yung nakakakita kung saan kayo magaling, kung saan yung kahinaan nyo. You yourself din naman, kayo rin mismo, mararamdaman niyo po yun, di ba? Kung saan kayo medyo nangangailangan ng mas suporta or mas tulong at doon naman sa mga bagay na kayang-kaya nyo na po yun. So, parte po rin yun ng classroom assessment. So, meaning to say, hindi lang siya nakafocus sa numerical na equivalent ng mga nagagawa niyo ng mga accomplishments niyo Yan din po ay parte ng inyong, uh, ng ating classroom assessment. Okay, next. Okay, classroom assessment during face-to-face. -face. As a teacher, nagturo din naman po ako for, I think it's 17 years. So, yan po madali pong mag-assess ng nalalaman ng isang estudyante pag face-to-face. -face. Siyempre, di ba? Nakikita ko kayo ng personal, nakikita kayo ng mga teachers nyo ng personal. Pag gumagawa kayo ng activity, nakikita nila yung mga ginagawa ninyo. Talagang right before their eyes. Madali lang po siya. But then, we are here in a pandemic situation. So, ganito ang nagiging ano natin, ang nagiging sitwasyon natin when it comes to classroom assessment. Sige po, ma'am. Ayan. I, I think naman nararanasan nyo rin po yan, di ba? So, ganyan na po ang sitwasyon ng classroom assess assessment natin during online class. Okay, as a teacher, eh, kung ano man yung nakikita namin during online class, kung ano man yung set work na pinagagawa namin sa inyo at kung ano yung mga pinapasa ninyo, doon nakasentro ang aming classroom assessment. Kaya pag classroom discussion, sana po huwag kayong mayayang mag-recite. Recite lang na recite kasi meron yun katapat na grade or grado. Sa public school, they have their modules. Pero sa atin kasi we have our worksheets kasi online class po tayo. Tama po ba? So basically, yung mga worksheets natin, wag natin pa, parang wag natin ipapagsawal ang bahala yun kasi mahalaga yun. Kasi isa yun sa pinagbabatayan ng grades na nakukuha po ninyo. Okay, so yan po yung classroom asset, assessment natin during online class. Next po. Okay, we have two types of classroom assessment. We have the formative assessment and the summative assessment. So, ano bang pinagkaiba nung dalawang yan? Okay, let us first define formative assessment. Okay, when we talk about formative assessment, it refers to the ongoing forms of assessment that are closely linked to the learning process. It is characteristically informal and intended to help students ident identify strengths and weaknesses in order to learn from the assessment experience. So, itong formative assessment, hindi po siya recorded. Okay? Hindi po ito nire-record na ating mga teacher. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nito na hindi ito importante. Napaka-importante ng formative assessment kasi dito unang mag-gauge ng teacher kung ano yung natutunan nyo sa discussion nyo. Kung uh, madali mo bang na-comprehend yung lesson na diniscuss o kailangan pang gumamit ni teacher ng ibang strategies para makuha ng mga estudyante niya yung lesson na tinuturo niya. So, formative assessment is very important as summative assessment. So, ayan po ang tinatawag natin ang formative assessment. A questions after a class discussion is a form of or is an example of formative assessment. Okay, next. Next. 
Ayan, we have summative assessment. Ano naman tong summative assessment na ito? Sabi dito, it measures whether learners have met the content and performance standards. Teachers must use methods to measure student learning that have been deliberately designed to assess how well students have learned or able to apply their learning in different contexts. So, mag-measure dyan ng teacher yung Kung naating ba niyang isang estudyante yung performance standard na sinasabi natin o yung natutunan niya ba ay nagagamit niya din sa kanyang pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay. Okay? The result of summative assessment are recorded and used to report on the learner's achievement. Primarily, the results of summative assessment are reported to the learners and their parents and guardians. So, basically, kung ang formative assessment ay hindi nare-record, Ang summative assessment po ang nare-record po ngayon ng ating mga teachers. Katulad ng quizzes, graded recitation, project, um, quarterly exam, or the long quiz. Yan po. So, nire-record yan at nire-report yan sa inyong mga parents. So, paanong paraan? Through SF9 o yung tinatawag natin na report card po ninyo. Okay, next. In addition, mapakabalik. In addition, these are reported to principal, school heads, teachers who will receive the child in the next grade level, and in guidance teachers who shall who should help students cope with challenges they experience in school. So nire report din to siya para sa susunod na level makita nila yung inyong performance. Ayan through uh, your report card. Okay, next po. Okay, now let's move on with the fallacies and guidelines for classroom assessment. Siyempre po, hindi lang po gawa-gawa ng mga teachers ang pag assess nila sa klase po nila. Meron pong mga binababang memo, deaf and orders from the Department of Education para ito po yung pagbabasihan natin. So the first deaf and order, number 8, series of 2015, the policy guidelines in classroom assessment for the K-12 to basic education program assessment should be used in form and improve classroom practices and promotes learning outcomes. So basically, nung nilabas po itong K-12, to meron tayong tatlong components na ginigradean po sa inyo. Pinasimplify po nila, meron tayong written works, performance tasks, and quarterly exam, quarterly test. Okay, so next policy. However, because of the pandemic, dahil dun sa naranasan natin since last year, kaya nakapag-online tay, online classes tayo nung wala sa panahon, Defend Order Number 012 Series of 2020, Adoption of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan for School Year 2020-2021 in light, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. So ano to? To supplement the said deaf or deaf ed order that deaf ed issues the interim policy guidelines for assessment and grading in light of the basic education learning continuity plan to provide guidance on the assessment of student learning and on the grading scheme to be adopted this school year. Di ba nga nagkaroon pa po ng, ano, ng discussion dyan kung magtutul itutuloy bang online class, kung one year muna magpapahinga ang mga estudyante, kung magkaka magkakaroon ba ng freeze dun sa, ano, sa education system natin. Pero hindi yung pinayagan ng DepEd kasi naniniwala sila na despite of this pandemic, kailangan i-continue po natin ang inyong pag-aaral. Kaya po lumabas po yung DepEd order, order na yan. Interim policy, pansamantala natin gagamitin para ma-assess po namin kayo ng maayos. Okay, next. Okay, in connection with that, for the current school year 2020-2021, quarterly assess assessment shall not be administered. So, hindi daw magkakaroon ng mga quarterly exam. However, days allotted for quarterly assessment in Deaf and Order 7 series of 2020 to 2021 may be used for the presentation of major performance for the quarter that addresses this performance. Wala daw so, exam? Hindi po, ma'am yung okay. explain Okay? So, ito po ngayon ang mangyayari. Uh, hahatiin po nila yung quarterly assessment dun sa performance task at sa written works. Yan po ay inilabas last year. So, nung first quarter po ninyo last year, tatlong components pa po ang ginigrade namin sa inyo. Pero nung binaba po yan by October, kailangan po nating sumunod sa DepEd. Kaya ito po yung nangyari, ma'am. 
paki next slide po. Ayan. Quarterly examination were given a weight of 20% constantly in debit order number 8, series of 2015. Since it was no longer be a part of the grading system for this school year, it previously determined weight was distributed equally into written works and performance tasks, allotting an additional 10% to each component. This maintains an emphasis on performance tasks for some learning areas. So basically, siguro yung quarterly examination na component, inalis muna yun. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun, wala tayong quarterly exam. We do have what we call it long quiz. And the long quiz, nandito po siya under sa atin, written works. Okay? So, yung 20% ang quarterly examination ay hinati sa written works, binigyan po yun ng 10% at yung another 10% ay inilagay po sa performance task. Okay. Ayan po. Ito na po yun. Weight distribution of summative assessment components for learning area for grade 1 to grade 10. Okay, so panggang grade 10 junior high school, ito po. We have written works and we have performance tasks. Language, AP, ESV, ang written works niya is 40%. For the performance tasks, 60%. So science and math naman po, written works 50%, performance tasks 50%. For MAPE, EPP, and TLE, the written works is 30% and the performance task is 70%. Percent po. So, kung makikita nyo, mataas talaga ang percentage ng performance task. Okay po, ma'am? Okay, ito naman po, weight distribution of the summative assessment components for senior high school. Sa written works and performance test po nila sa core subject, written works is 40%. And the performance test is 60%. Sa academic track, all other subjects, written works 40%, performance test 60%. Pagdating naman po sa work immersions, research, business enterprise, simulation exhibit performance, 50% po ang written works, performance test po is 50%. Pero dito sa Technical, Vocational, and Livelihood o TBS, Sports, Arts, and Design Tracks, wala naman po tayo doon. Pero babanggitin ko na rin po, Work Immersion, Research, Exhibit, and Performance, ang written works po nila ay 30% and performance task is 70%. Pero nandito po tayo sa Academic Track. We have, may ang strand po natin ay STEM at ABM po. Okay, so next slide po. Ayan, paano ba kinukompute ang inyong mga grades? Ang gagamitin ko lang po itong nasa table 3 ha, kasi yan po ay computation of written works and performance tasks in language, AP, ESP for grade 1 to grade 10 and senior high school core subjects. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na highest possible score. Kunwari sa written works, meron po siyang apat. Meron 20, 25, 20, 20 for a total of 85. Ang le si Learner A, nakukuha siya ng, sa first written works niya is 18 points. Sunod naman, 20 points. 22 points, I mean. Sa third is 20 points. Sa pang-apat po ay 17 points. So, i-add lang po natin siya. Equals 91. Ita times so by 100 divided by, by total number of items. Ang kanyang weighted possible score is 91. Weighted average is 36.4. So, performance test naman... Meron tayong sariling components sa performance tasks, pero ito po kasi example from DepEd. So, kunwari sa performance tasks ay may apat na activities. Sa first is 15 points, ang highest possible score. Sa second is 15 points, 25 points sa third, and 20 points support for a total of 75. So, kunwari ang learner A ay nakakuha siya ng 12 points sa first activity, sa second naman is 13, sa third is 19, and sa last is 15. So, kapag in siya is 56 times 100 divided by the total number of items, 75 po siya times 60%. Kasi ang performance task ng AP language and ESP is 60%, so 45%. I-add natin siya. At ang initial grading niya is 81.4. Pero hindi pa po yan yung mag makikita sa card niyo Ang 81.4, hahanapin po natin sa transmutation table, yung equivalent niyan. At ang equivalent po niya is 88%. So yung 88% pang magiging quarterly grading niyo at yan po ang makikita sa inyong report card. Okay, so ganun po yung computation. Next, ma'am. Sige po, okay na po yan. 
Ayan. Ano ba ang bumubuo sa written works? It comprises of your homeworks and assignments, essay and composition, sheet work, worksheets, quizzes such as summative, and of course, we have the long quiz, which is same as quarterly test. So, dyan po namin nilagay ang inyong quarterly test na tinatawag na natin ngayon na long quiz. Okay, next. We have also our on performance task breakdown. The individual demonstration is 20 points. Group presentation is 10 points. Oral work recitation, 20 points. Project, 10 points. Attendance, 20 points. Character, 20 points. So, sa attendance po natin, the same ruling po na pinatutupad po natin pag po kayo ay umabsent. At pero may excuse letter naman po kayo. Minus 0.5 lang po. Pero kapag po wala kayong excuse letter, minus 1 point po sa attendance po niyo. So, ang total po niyan is 100 points po. So, yan ang makikita natin sa ating performance. Tapos, yan ang ginigradean po sa inyo. Okay, next. Ma'am. Okay, total number of items of quizzes for grade level. Actually, grade 7 to grade 12 po ito, ha? 100 points po ang inyong uh, total number of items for quizzes. Next. For the long quiz naman po, for, para po sa grade 7 to 12, 100 points din po. Okay, so... Ayun po ang aking i-discuss for the classroom assessment. Thank you for listening. Sana po meron po kayong naiintindihan. And um, kung meron po kayong katanungan, pwede nyo pong isulat sa chat box natin later on. Babasahin po yan at sasagutin po namin. And of course, wini-wish ko po na maging maganda po ang ating academic year 2021-2022. Sana po maging maayos po ang inyong mga pag-aaral. And thank you again for listening. God bless po. Thank you so much, Ma'am Anna. And now, may I present to you our newest assistant school principal, the ever so hardworking Mrs. Maria Teresa A. Torrechante, to discuss the class schedules, roles, and responsibilities. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon, Paul. So, naririnig niyo po ba ako? Umihay mo po. Ma'am Elpa, naririnig mo na ako. Pa-thumbs up ka, Ma'am Elpa. Ma'am Bonday. Okay na po. So, sige nga po kung naririnig nga po, pa-thumbs up na po sa lahat. Wala. So, wala nang nakikinig. Okay, so mga wala, mga walang galang na nga po. Pwede po ba ako makapag-request? Pwede po bang makita yung mga itsura natin? Kung may mga nakikinig pa, pwede po ba mag-on cam? Kasi parang si Miss Gertida lang ang, nakita ko, ang nakikita ko kanina pa. Si Miss Escorel at saka si Tiwi kanina. Sige, tingnan ko po ha. Kasi para malaman po na may kung may mga nakikinig pa. So, mukhang wala naman pong problema, no? When it comes to our camera. Kasi dapat ready na tayo, why Monday? So, mag-practice na tayo, di ba? Okay, about the others. Ayan. Si Rafael, nasa si Rafael Santos? Hindi pa makita. Okay, so yung iba hindi pa rin talaga. Okay. So, today... I shall be discussing with you your class schedule. Ayun na, nakita ko na si Rafael. Okay. Um, sige po, Ma'am Eva. So, may mga grade 10 po tayo dito, but before anything else, I would like to welcome each and every one, your parents, grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12, for a fruitful school year 2021-2022. Okay. So, welcome po sa Junior High School Life and Senior High School Life. So, it means counting Kemot na lang, ano, sa mga grade 12 na graduate na sa high school. Okay, so let's start and let's proceed. Okay, Echo, sorry ha, et, hindi po talaga marinig. Baka nandito sa, ano, wait lang. 
Hello po. Narinig na po ba? Loud and clear na po ba? Okay. So, I'm uh, sorry about uh, kanina ha. Okay, so ito na po tayo. Oh, thank you po. Oh, now, let's proceed to your schedule. Let's start first with our grade 10. Okay po, Ma'am Eva. Ready ka na po. Okay, so from grade 7 po yan. Okay, Ma'am, may sige. mga grade 8 din po, Ma'am, nakasama ah, ko na. Ah, okay. So, sige po. From grade 7, grade 8. So, pwede nyo pong screenshot yung inyong schedule. Main campus po yan at saka soldiers. Okay po. For grade 9, St. Mary class, you can screenshot na po. Notice po that mayroong homeroom during Friday. So, starting from the uh, from the first Friday of the opening of the class, ay magkakaroon na po kayo ng homeroom sessions every Friday with your uh, class advisor. Next po, for the grade 10 St. Lucille ng main campus at Soldiers for Branch. Okay, now let's go to the Woodside and Los Pinos branches. Grade 7 po, ayan yung kanilang schedule. Please take note. Grade 8. Grade 9. And grade 10. Okay po. Now for the Mary Holmes branch ng junior high, let's start with grade 7. Grade 8, Grade 9, and Grade 10. Okay po. How about for the Camellia branch? For Grade 7, Grade 8, Grade 9 and Grade 10. And for the Junior High School Heights branch, we have the following class schedules for Grade 7, Grade 8, Grade 9, and grade 10. Okay. So please take note po of the two scheduled or announced Saturdays for a particular month for worksheets or activities which will be counted as attendance. For the information of the uh, a few uh, students, uh, junior high school students and senior high school students that uh, there will be two announced uh, Saturdays for your worksheets and uh, performance activities. But don't worry, this will be, uh, you will be notified on this, okay? Either through worksheets or performance tasks activities. Okay, so how about for the senior high, Mom Eva? Yung schedule po ng senior high. So while waiting for the senior high school uh, schedule, uh, okay, so iyon na nga, mga nagpatayan agad ng camera. Ayong makita ng personal. Okay. Ayaw nyo yata makita yung schedule nyo eh. Ayaw nyo, wag nyo. 
Now let's go to the senior high. Sige na nga, napipilitan lang. Okay, for the senior high school, let's go to uh, grade 11 first. Tignan natin kung yung mauna, STEM. For the first semester, okay, for the information of the new uh, senior high students, so uh, semestral po yung ating senior high. So that means the subjects and the books for the first semester are all different for the second semester. Okay po. Okay, for the senior high school grade 11 STEM. Pa, pa balik po sa STEM. Uh, St. Agnes po yan. Okay, yan po yung inyong schedule. Um, notice din po that, excuse me, meron din po kayong homeroom sessions this time with your class advisor during Fridays. Okay. How about for the grade 11 APM? So, ganun din po. Uh, there, there comes a time na may different um, subject uh, from STEM and ABM. Okay. Uh, ito naman yung sa grade 12. Okay, let's start from the STEM. Grade 12 STEM, St. Alexander. Uh, na screenshot na ba? How about for the grade 12 ABM, St. Blaise? Same thing po, uh, senior high school, uh, you still need uh, to announce Saturdays for a particular month also, just like uh, the junior high school. Okay. So, ayun po yun. But, um, ito na nga, since online nga po, uh, there are still uh, activities or expectations from you, uh, dear uh, students, and as well as the parents who are listening. So, ito yung mga roles and responsibilities that we should be reminded of as always. Okay po. So, number one, what are these expectations from students and parents? Let's start po. Okay, so number one, you should attend classes on time and regularly. Okay, so hindi po po grade 11 na kayo, grade 12 na kayo, you can do what you like. Anyway, you graduate na, hindi po yun. Um, last year, mayroong muntik ng hindi go graduate. Kasi hindi religiously nag a ng online class. Okay po. As mentioned earlier by Ma'am uh, Limos, attendance is a must since it is part of the uh, performance task as discussed a while ago by Ma'am uh, Anna, our new uh, school registrar. Okay, number two, accomplish tasks and complete homework on time. Number three, be prepared for classes with all necessary materials. Number four, ask a question when something is not clear. And then number five, maintain good physical health through exercise, proper nutrition, and adequate sleep. Number six, follow procedures, rules, and, and policies. Okay, po. Now, what for the parents? So, alam naman natin na, our parents are very supportive on this. Okay, so number one, set up a study space and provide the required technology or system. Number two, prepare for technical issues that may come up. Number three, see to it that your child uh, establishes a routine for working on his virtual activities daily. So, hindi naman na kayo gano, kasi malalaki na tayo. So, um, uh, generally kasi itong uh, ating reminders for parents of, for their expectations of what are we going to expect from our parents. Help your child or children maintain a regular study schedule. Number five, monitor your child, children progress weekly using the LMS. O sa mga very supportive and very hands-on parents, o sig siguro naman yung iba ginagawa pa din naman ito. Kahit high school na, they monitor their child or their children. 
But reminders lang po to parents, please do not participate to class to ask questions. Instead, allow your child to ask the teacher. So, yun lang po. So, uh, thank you very much po for listening and stay safe po tayong lahat. Thank you so much, Ma'am Torreshante. Last but not the least, our passionate and kind-hearted school principal, Mrs. Alicia M. Danau, to show us the school's tentative schedule of activities and some reminders for our dear parents and learners. Hello, everyone. Am I loud and clear? Yes. Okay. A joyful and wonderful afternoon to our uh, Franciscan senior high school, junior high school, and senior high school learners, as well as the parents who join with us today. I am very happy to see you all attending our school's orientation for academic year 2021-2022. I will be showing to you our upcoming school activities and contests. Okay, we have virtual field trip under Genio. Okay, our tentative schedule for the month of August. Okay, so on August 23, that will be our regular classes for all levels from preschool to senior high school, where you can meet your ad class advisor as well as your subject teachers. And then on August 27, we have Buwan ng Wika celebration via Zoom. Next, for September. Okay, so starting September 6, we will have our grooming inspection for the month of September. It is very important that you look presentable, beautiful, and handsome in front of your teachers. And then, on, on September 8, we have our Mama Mary's birthday celebration via Zoom. And then on September 17, this is for preschool, elementary, from grades 1 to grade 6, Gardenia Online School Nutri Tour. Okay, the schedule is 9 to 10 and then 10.30 to 11 a.m. And then on October... On October 4, another grooming inspection for the month of October. And then at the same time, we will have our St. Francis Feast Day via FB Live Mass. And then that will be on October 20, 21, 22. That is the first quarterly long test from preschool to senior high school via Genio. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this school year, we will have our math contest via Genio. Christmas card making contest for elementary. Headdress making contest from, for preschool and elementary and then Christmas carol contest for our junior high school and senior high school students. Another one. Next slide, please. Then the science contest via Genio also. Okay, we have also Virtual Tour Challenge for Junior High School and Senior High School students. Then we have also Storytelling Contest for Elementary. Next, Look Alike a Hero Contest for our Preschool. Okay, reminders for parents and learners. Number one, submit ID picture with white background. Number two, observe proper grooming during the photo shoot at home. Wear the prescribed uniform. 
Number four, to be submitted to your class advisor. Number five, kindly follow the sample ID picture. Next slide, please. Okay, that's for the preschool. Next, for elementary. Next, for junior high school. Next, for senior high school. And then, um, date of submission will be on August 27, 2021 to your class advisor. That's all my report for this afternoon. Thank you for listening. See you all soon on you. August 23. Thank you so much, Ma'am Danao. May I call on Ms. Rhea A. Antonio, the team leader of Springville Heights branch, to present the school's mission and vision. Let us recite the school's vision and mission. Vision, a community of learners committed to the, to the students, the leadership skills and awareness that each child is a unique individual and to keep his scholastic standing at the highest level. Mission, to create a loving and learning environment that empowers the person through academic excellence instilled into the mind of the students, the leadership skills and awareness uh, the core values, sorry po, ulitin ko lang po, to create a loving and learning environment that empowers a person through academic excellence and instill into the mind of our students the core val values, gospel of value of truth, the Christian principle of love for work, the Franciscan trust of prayer and loyalty to his school. Thank you so much, Mom Antonio.